This is a beginner's Python programming course. You will learn how to code in Python interactively by coding a blackjack game line by line. I'll walk you through every step of the way. I originally created this for another channel, but wanted to also share it with you here. You can follow along using a local code editor such as Visual Studio Code, but I'll be demonstrating with an online code editor called Replit. Once you're logged into Replit, you can start by creating a new Python project. I'm going to close this tab here and zoom in a bit. For this tutorial, I'm going to say what I'm about to do, and then I want you to see if you can do it on your own before I show you how to do it. Trying things out yourself will help you learn more than passively watching. We'll first learn about variables. A variable is a reference to a piece of information that can change. We'll start by creating three variables. You can make up almost any name for a variable and set it equal to a string, integer, or other data type. So let's create a variable called suit and set it equal to hearts, and then a variable called rank and set it equal to k for king, and then a variable called value and set it equal to 10. Okay. You'll notice the strings are surrounded by quotation marks, but the number or int is just by itself. Now I'll add a print statement to display information to the user. It prints the text, your card is, with a colon at the end. I didn't tell you beforehand what to do this time, but from now on I will. On your own, try to create another print statement that prints the rank. This time, we can just add the variable right in the print statement without quotation marks. And we're going to be doing a lot of refactoring as we create this program. Let's refactor this so it's just one print statement that's going to print your card is, colon, space, and then the rank. So we are going to be doing string concatenation just like that. So you can concatenate as many strings and variables as you want. So let's update the code so that the print function print, prints your card is k of hearts. So we just need to add of, and we have to make sure we put spaces on each side of the word of, and then suit. And let me just adjust this here. Okay, as you know, you can use a list in Python to store multiple values or items at a time. So above the suit variable, create a suits variable and assign it to a list of suits. In this case, spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds. We learned about how you can use the bracket operator to access a specific element in a list. The number inside the bracket specifies the index of the list to access. Remember, the indexes start at zero. So you update the suit variable so that the value of hearts come from, comes from the suits list. Now we'll practice a for loop. So add a for loop to the end of the code that prints each suit. And then we'll just test this out. I really hope you actually are following along and trying it out right before I show it to you. That's how you're going to learn the best here. So spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds. Now this next thing is, is just to see if we can do it. So it's not going to be part of our final code. But right before the loop we just added, see if you can add another item to the suits list that's the string snakes. There's a few different ways to do it, but we will use append snakes. So this is just going to append the word snakes at the end of the list. So if I run this, we can now see snakes at the bottom. Okay, now we're going to start the process of representing a full deck of cards with Python code. So we're going to actually get rid of a lot of this. We're going to get rid of all of this. We're just going to have the suits, and then we're going to have this for loop at the bottom. We're going to do a lot of refactoring as we go, mainly for educational purposes, but also so we can get the, a really good blackjack game. So we have a list of suits. After that, we're going to create a list of ranks. That's A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, J, Q, K. Now, before the suits list, create a new variable called cards and assign an empty list to the variable. 
you can an empty list is just two brackets with nothing inside. Now in the cards list, there should be an item for each card in the deck. Each item in the suits list should be combined with each item in the ranks list for a total of 52 items or cards. Let's work our way up to that. So first, we'll update the print statement in the for loop so that it prints a list with two elements. The first element should be suit and the second should be the first element of the ranks lists. So this should print an ace in every suit. So I'm going to update this so it's going to be a list with suit and ranks. The first item is going to be at index 0. Now I'll just print that out. So we got them, these four right here. Now instead of just printing an ace in every suit, let's print every rank in every suit. This can be done easily with a for loop nested within another for loop. So inside the for loop, add another for loop that loops through the ranks. Then update the print statement so that it's not just printing the first element in the ranks list, but it's printing the rank from the for other for loop. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, we're going to do for, for rank and ranks, and then we have to make sure to indent this print statement so it's inside this other for loop. And this is now just going to be rank. So it's going to print the suit and rank. And I'll just run that. And now we have, with this nested for loop, we have every card, every rank in every suit. All 52 cards are printed as two item lists. An element in a list can be another list. So instead of printing 52 two item lists, Let's append those 52 cards to the cards list. So uh, we already have the cards list here, it's empty, but I'm gonna do cards.append. And so we're appending this item, the, all these items to the cards list. So let's check what the cards list looks like by printing, out a, pr printing it out at the bottom. Remember, make sure this is not indented at all, and we'll do print cards. And I'll run that. And then here it is here. So this is the list. It's not one, it, there's just a comma between each item in the list here. You may notice that all the cards are in order in the cards list. For a game like this though, the cards must be shuffled. So to help with this, import the random module at the top of your code. So that's just, we just do import random. Now we'll be able to use the, the random module. So this is going to import the random module, which contains a variety of things related to random number generation. And as you probably remember, when you import a Python module, it allows you to use additional commands in your code. Specifically, we're going to be using the random.shuffle function. So right before at the end where it says print cards, we're going to call random.shuffle and pass in the cards list to that function. And then if I play this here or run the program, we can see that these are not in order anymore. See, ace of spades, three of spades, king of diamonds, jack of hearts. So these are no longer in order because they've been shuffled. Now let's remove a single element from the cards list. This is similar to dealing a card from a deck, and this can be done with the pop method. So after the cards are shuffled, let's create another card variable and just pop off a card from the cards list and put it into that variable called card and just print that card. So I'll do card equals cards dot pop. And then instead of printing all the cards, I'm just gonna print a single card I'll run the program. See, every time I run the program, you can see we're getting a different card. We're dealing a different card because it's been shuffled. So we've already learned all about functions, and now we're going to create a function. So create a, con a function called shuffle that just has the, the single line that shuffles the cards. So it's just def shuffle. And then I just have to make sure this is indented. So now when we call the shuffle function, it will 
shuffle the cards. So right before the print statement, call the shuffle function, and instead of just printing the single card, print the cards. So do shuffle, and then I will print all the cards, and let's just try out the program and we can see there was a problem. It's because we didn't put the, the colon here. So that's an important part of creating a function is putting the colon there. Now we'll create another function called deal and we'll put this line inside the, the deal function. So we're gonna define deal and I'll put the colon this time and make sure to indent that. And we can see this has a orange squiggly line underneath it because variables can only be accessed in the context that they were created. So the card variable will not be available outside of the deal function. You can get a value out of a function by returning a result using the return statement. So at the end we're going to return the card. Okay now we've taken care of that squiggly line there. So after the shuffle function is called, we'll call the deal function and assign the return value to a variable named card. Then we'll update the print function to print card instead of cards. So card equals deal. And then we'll just print the card. And again, we see a different card every time we run the program. What if you want the deal function to deal more than one card? Well, let's refactor the deal function to, an accept, to accept an argument. So any number of arguments can appear inside the parentheses when a function is created, separated by commas. Inside the function, the arguments are assigned to variables called parameters. So, start by making it, so we'll start by making it so the deal function takes an argument named number. Then we'll make sure when we call the function, we use the new parameter by uh, making it so we're gonna deal two. So I'm just gonna put number here. It's gonna, it's gonna deal a number of cards, and we're gonna deal two. And I just didn't say this before, but now instead, this is not one card anymore. So we're gonna update this to be cards dealt. But there's a special shortcut. You can either, it's gonna be uh, com command or control D, and now I'm actually selecting the card two different times. See, I, I now have multiple cursors here. So basically I selected the word. I double clicked to select the word, then did Command or Control D. Now it's selecting two words. And now I can type in cards dealt. So now I can type in two places at one time. So that's a cool thing that you can do in Replit and you can do it in many other code editors. And I'll run the program, but it should still only deal one card, because even though we're passing this parameter into here, we're not doing anything with it yet here. So we want to update the deal function, so it's going to return a list of cards instead of a single card. In the first line of the function, create an empty list named cards dealt. Then update the last line of the function to return cards dealt instead of return card. So let's do that really quick. We're going to do cards dealt is going to equal an empty list and I'll just copy that and paste it right here. Now do you remember how to use a the range function with a for loop? We talked about it earlier in the course, we just briefly touched on it, but let's create a for loop that's going to add a card from the deck for each card dealt. So we can do that by creating a for loop for x in range number. Now this is a common thing you're going to be doing in Python, creating a for loop that's going to be in range number because now it's going to loop this many times. It's going to loop this many times, which is the number we pass in here. And we're going to do a few things in this for loop. First, we are going to um, actually do this, what we already have, card equal cards.pop. And then we'll do cards dealt dot append card. So now we're just this card that we popped off the deck, we are appending it to the cards dealt, and then we're returning the cards dealt here. So down here in the code, let's separate out a single card from the two cards dealt. So let's create a variable called card and set it equal to the first item in the cards dealt list and then we'll just print that card instead of cards dealt. So we are gonna do card equals cards 
delt, and then remember we just use the brackets and put zero to get the first item in that list, and then we'll just print a card. Now I'm just gonna test out the program. We're still just seeing a single card here, but it's doing a lot more behind the scenes now. So now let's separate out the rank part of a single card. So after we create the card there, let's create a variable named rank and assign it the rank from the card. So we'll do rank equals card, and then I have to get index one because the rank, this that's the nine here, the, the second item in this card is the rank. So each rank has a different value. In blackjack, the value of an ace, or an A in this, in this program, is 11. Or sometimes it can actually be 1. It's going to be 11 or 1, but we'll get to the 1 part later. So Jack, J, Q, and K, which is Jack, Queen, and King, have the value of 10. And then the numbers have the value of the number. So we need to check what the rank is and set the value depending on the rank. So this is the perfect time for a conditional statement, specifically an if statement. Before the final print statement or program, we're going to add an if statement to check if the rank equals A. And if so, we'll assign 11 to a variable named value. So we'll do if rank, and I hope you remember, if you're following along, I hope you remember to use two equal signs instead of one equal sign here. So if rank equals a, then value is going to equal, with a single equal sign, it's going to equal 11. Now if rank does not equal a, we'll want to check if it equals j, q, or k. That can be done with an elif statement. For now, we'll just create an elif statement to check if the rank equals j, and then if so, we will set the value to 10. So we talked about the three logical operators, and, or, and not. You can use these three operators in conditional statements to check multiple conditions at once. So we want to check if rank is J, or rank is Q, or rank is K. So update the code with the, the, and, with the ors. Now there can be any number of elif statements after an if statement, but at the end there can only be a single else statement, and, like we discussed, the else is just going to be if none of the other ones are true. So let's add an else statement, and inside we'll just assign rank to value, because we've already gotten all the letters out of the way, the rest are numbers, and we can assign it directly to the value. Now we'll, instead of printing the card at the end, let's print the rank and the value. So I can just type in rank, comma, value, and when multiple values in a print statement are listed with a comma separating them, both values are printed with a space in between. So let's test this out a few times. Q10, 5, 5, 6, 6. So we can see every time we press it, it's going to be a random rank and value. Now we already talked about dictionaries in Python. It's like a list, but more general. You can think of a dictionary as a mapping between a set of indices, which are called keys and values. So key value pairs, each key maps to a value. So above the print statement, let's create a variable called rank underscore D-I-C-T for dictionary and create a dictionary with two items, a key value pair for the rank and a key value pair for the value. So we have the string rank here, and then the actual rank variable, the string value, and the actual value variable. Before we are printing the rank variable and the value variable, but let's update this code so we're actually getting the rank and value from the rank dictionary right here. So I'm going to copy that, and then I just pasted that, but now I'm going to use bracket notation. And so I'll put two brackets, but then I also have to surround this in quotation marks. And then I'm going to put the rank dictionary, the brackets, and then the quotation marks because we're accessing that key there. And then I can just run the program, and it's still doing the same thing as before, just a lot more complicated as far as the code goes. But it's going to be good to have more complicated code as our program is going to become more complicated as we go. 
So when writing a program, there are many ways to do almost everything. Now we're going to refactor the code to get the value of each rank without using an if statement. Instead, we'll store both the rank name and value in the ranks list using dictionaries. So let's delete all the code, the lines of code after where it says shuffle. So here I know we typed in a lot of stuff there, but it was just kind of, kind of to, to practice. And now we're going to practice a different method of doing this. So now let's create a new card variable, a new variable called card at the end, and let's assign to the card variable a, a single card that will deal from the deck, but we'll make sure that card is not in a list. So this is a little tricky. I'm going to do deal, and I'll deal one card, but now I have to get the first item. So this is going to deal one card, but the one card it's going to deal is going to be in a list. So I want to get the first item in the list, which is going to be the only item in the list. So I have to put this zero in brackets here to get that card out of a list before it goes into the card variable. Now we're going to update the ranks list. So here's the, the, the ranks list. Each element of the list should now be a dictionary. When lists or list elements are long, it's common to put each element on its own line. So we're going to put each element on its own line, and each element is going to have the rank and the value. So for instance, it will be rank A, value 11. Rank 2, value 2. So it's going to look like this. And I'm, now I'm actually going to zoom out uh, just a little bit, and we have all these, there are all these ranks, and each one in this list is a dictionary. Each element in the list is a dictionary. Okay, now that this is updated, let's go down and just print a card. So we can see now that we've updated that ranks list. So print card. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like coming from our list. So we got the suit, and then we have the rank that's also going to have the value here, the rank and the value. We can see every time we click it, we get a random item. Now let's update the code. So instead of printing the whole card, we just print the value. So in this example, the value is 2. So we just want to print this 2, just that, that value. So how can we update this? Try to see if you can figure out how to update this line so it only prints just the value number there. So first of all, we have to see that we're in a list and we need, so this is the first element of the list. This is the second element. So we have to start by getting the second element of the list, which is index one. And then we have an object here or a dictionary, I mean, and we need to get, so here we have this key value pair. So we need the value at that key. So to get the value of that key, we are gonna put more brackets and I'm gonna put value, the key of value. So now we, that should work. Let's try it. Okay, nine, seven. See, every time it's gonna just give us the value of the card. Now we'll start defining classes that will be used in order to separate out different aspects of the game. So classes, you may remember, provide a way of bundling data and functionality together. Creating a new class creates a new type of object, allowing new instances of that type to be made. An object can contain a number of functions, which we call methods, as well as data that is used by those functions called attributes. So we're, we're gonna use classes to model three parts of the game, a card, a deck, and a hand. So far, we've mainly worked on the elements of the deck class. So right after this import statement at the top, we're going to uh, make a class, a class called deck, and we're gonna put everything that we've written so far in that class. So we're just going to do class deck colon. Okay, now we just highlight everything here. And then I'm going to press tab to put everything in the class of deck because everything's well, indented a little bit. And then these last few lines of code we don't need, so I'll just delete those. Those are just for testing out. A class is like a template. You can use that class to create an instance of the class called an object then you can use the instance. Each instance keeps track of its own state, so you can update an instance created from a class and it won't impact other objects created from the same class. 
soon you'll see an example of all this to make it easier to understand. But first, let's prepare a class to create an instance from it. When you create an instance of a class, Python automatically calls a function, also called a method, in the class named init. Remember, we already discussed this earlier in the course. So the contents of this init method should be code that is run one time to initialize the instance. So at the beginning of our class, let's create this init function. So we'll do def underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And if you remember from before, we always have to pass in self to all of these functions in a class because then it gets a self is referring to the instance of the class that we've developed. Now we're going to indent all the code that's not part of the shuffle or deal function. So the code will be part of this new function. So I'm just going to highlight all of this here, including uh, the suits here, and then just press tab. So like I said, we just added self in here. You should always, uh, all the methods in a class or all the functions should have self. Anything inside the parentheses, remember, is called an argument. Their variables pass them from the caller to the functions. As I said, all functions in a class should receive self as an argument, and self represents the instance of the class. By using the self keyword, the function can access the attributes and methods of the class. So let's make sure to add self as the first item in the parentheses of the other functions. So we are going to add self here, and then see how we already have number here, but we're going to add self at the beginning, and we so we can still call this function with just a single number, but it's going to also get a reference to the instance here. Now I want you to notice that the cards here is underlined in red. So before it wasn't, when we were before we made this into a class, we could just access this cards variable, but now we cannot. So let's fix that. Inside a class, in order to access a variable in multiple functions, also called methods, the variable has to start with self dot. So we're going to change all instances of cards in every function to self dot cards, starting with this. So self dot cards. Now this is going to make it so we can access it in other places. And then we'll change this to self.cards. And then this is self.cards. And then self.cards. So now this will be a variable that's specifically associated with the instance of the deck that's created. And then we can access it in all of these other methods. Okay, we can now create an instance also called an object of the deck class. So at the very end of the code, let's create a variable called deck1 and make it an instance of the deck class. So I have to make sure I'm not indented at all, and I'll do deck1 equals deck. There we go. Now since we created card with self.cards, we can access that, we can access cards from the instance of the class. So let's just print out the cards from our deck one. So we'll do print deck one dot cards. And we can try that out. Now you can see the the list of all of these cards. It has the suit and the rank and the value for each card. So underneath where we created deck one, let's create deck two. We'll create another instance of another deck. So so now we can call methods on these instances. And you see some of the methods we have. We have shuffle and deal. So on deck two, right after we create the deck two, let's shuffle the deck. So deck two dot shuffle. And then I have to make sure to put the parentheses at the end here. Right after we print deck one, let's print deck two, or the cards of deck two. So I'm going to copy that, and then we'll print deck two cards. So now we should see that the deck one cards are not shuffled, and the deck two cards are shuffled. So let me move this over here. I'm going to run the program, and let's see if we can see the where deck one. So here's where here's deck one, 
and we can see how it's all diamonds, 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 di all the diamonds that are in a row because it's unshuffled. But then if we go into deck two, we can see we have diamonds, clubs, spades, diamonds, hearts. So these are shuffled in deck two, they are shuffled. Okay, the deck works. Now let's add safeguards to prevent errors. Every time the deal function is called, a card is removed from the cards list. You can only remove a card if there are cards to remove. So before the program tries to pop a card off self.cards, it should check if the length of self.cards is greater than zero. Remember, you can get the number of items in a list with length. So see if you can figure that out on your own. And then I'm about to show you how it's done. So when it's going to deal here, right as we're dealing, we're going to add an if statement here. So if the length of self.cards is greater than zero, and we do, we don't need this parentheses here. So if the length of self.cards is greater than zero, then we will do this. We'll pop up a card and add it to the cards dealt. If not, we just won't do anything, and then we'll return cards dealt, which could be an empty array if there were no cards on the deck. And now let's add something to the shuffle function. A deck with only one card does not need to be shuffled. So let's add the appropriate if statement to the shuffle function. So we'll do if the length of self.cards is greater than one, then we will shuffle. And then make sure I'll make sure to put the colon there. Okay. Since a card is a separate concept than a deck, next we'll make a card class. So let's create a card class with an init function. And in that init function, we'll set self.suit to equal hearts. So hopefully you already tried this. I'm gonna do class card, and then I will do def net. And then after the suit, we'll do self.rank and set it to A. So currently anytime a card is created, it will be an ace of hearts. Let's refactor the code so the suit and rank are specified when a card object is constructed. So the init method can take additional parameters besides self that are passed into it as the object is constructed. So we'll update it to take suit and rank. Now we'll create a special method that's underscore underscore str underscore underscore. When a class has this specific method, it's called when print is invoked on an object from the class. So we want to make it so when we print an object from the card class, it will print something like 10 of hearts or three of clubs or something like that. So we don't do print here, we do return. It's going to return this to the print statement. It's going to return self.rank and then we have to get the rank. And we do plus and then of, we have to put a string there, plus self.suit. So now it's going to return the rank, which is like two or a of, and then the suit, which is one of these. So let's just try it out real quick. I'm gonna go to the bottom. We don't need any of these to test because we're testing something completely different now. So do card one equals card. I'm gonna create a card and I have to pass in. Remember I have to first pass in the suit. So how about hearts? And then I have to pass in the rank, but we want to make it look like these ranks. So I'm just going to copy one of these here. And then after we create the card, I can just print card one. Let me clear this and then I'll just run that. J of hearts. Oh, see, I got the J of hearts. And feel free to add a few more cards like this and test out a few more if you want. Okay, now we're going to refactor this slightly. You remember way toward the beginning of this course, we talked about 
f strings. So f strings allow us to put variables right within a string. Do you remember how to do that? Let's see if you can update this to use an f string. So first, we're going to create a new string, but we're going to start with the letter f. And then inside this string, we put curly braces around the Python code, and we don't need these other strings here. So now we put another curly brace, and then an ending string here. Okay, it's still showing these um, red squiggly lines because if I have a double quote around the strings, then anytime other quotes are in the middle, I have to put a different type of quote. So we're going to use single quotes. Okay, so now we can make this a whole a string, but we use the brackets to put the variables right within the string. So now we've updated that to use an F string. So currently in the deck class, the last line of this init method appends a list as an item to the cards list. Instead of appending suit comma rank, we'll create and append an instance of the card class. Then afterwards, when a deck is created, it's filled with cards. So it's just like this. We're just going to delete that. I'll put card, and then I'll pass in a suit, and they rank. So now we're passing in card instances. So we're done with the deck and card classes, and we created them in such a way that they could basically be used for any card game. Now let's make a hand class. This will represent a hand in the game of blackjack. So create a hand class and add an init method and initialize a variable called self.cards that is set to an empty list. So let's go down here and we can also get rid of all this test code here. So the new class is called hand deck. And we'll also make the hand keep track of the value of the hand. So self.value, we'll start it at zero. In this blackjack game, there will be a human-controlled player and a program-controlled dealer. So let's add a dealer parameter in the init constructor method of the hand class. And then when the hand class is created, dealer should be set to true or false to keep track of what type of hand it is. So I'll pass in the parameter dealer, and then we just have to create a variable and called dealer and set it to dealer. So self.dealer equals dealer. If you remember from before, function parameters can have default values. So we want to make it so the default value of dealer is false. So then if we create a hand and we don't set the dealer value, it will automatically be false. And I'm just going to take off these spaces here to make it smaller here. So now a hand can be created. Let's give it some functionality. We'll add an add card method, and the method should take a card list as a parameter. And then we need to add that card list to the cards. So we can use the extend function, the extend method, to append each item in card list onto the cards list. So it's just going to look like this, self.cards.append, no, extend I mean, dot extend, and then we pass in card list. Now let's just add some code to test out what we have so far. So let's create a deck. And then we will shuffle the deck, deck.shuffle. Now we'll create a hand. Now we can add cards to the hand. So hand.add card. And we will deck.deal. We'll deal two cards into the hand. And then we'll just print hand.cards. Okay, so this is how it printed out. I was expecting this to look a little different because of this function. It, it, print, it should print like that. But I think the reason is because this is a list. So it's printing a list, not an individual card. So let's change this to print an individual card. I'll print the first card. So I'll put zero in there. I'll try it again. Nine of diamonds. And then we can also print the next card three of hearts. And then we can also print both cards if we just copy that and do hand.cards 
zero, hand at cards, one. Okay, ace of hearts and nine of spades. So those are the two cards that were dealt to the hand. Now we'll go back to the hand class and we'll add the ability to calculate the value of a hand. So let's add a method called calculate value and inside the method we'll set self.value to zero. Now we'll take this one step at a time. Uh, first, let's, let's make a for loop that's gonna go through every single card and inside the for loop, we'll just set the value of the card to a variable called card underscore value. So I'll do for card and self dot cards. Okay, so we're not doing anything with that yet, but we're going to in a second here. Now we wanna make sure that this is an integer. So let's convert that to an integer. If you remember, you just use int and then put it in print int, and then inside the parentheses, we put this value. Now just getting the card value for each card is not enough. Something must be done with the variable. So let's add that value to self.value. So we'll do self.value. And then if you remember from before, we can use the plus equals to add that to the current value. So we'll do card value. So as you may know, in blackjack, an ace can have the value of either 11 or one, depending on what is better for the player. So there's a few ways to implement that in code. So we're gonna do one way that's relatively simple. First, we'll check if the hand has an ace. So let's first create a variable that'll store whether the hand has an ace. So it'll just be called hand has underscore ace. We'll set it to false and we'll put it right under here. So we'll do has ace and we'll set to false. And since we're only gonna be using has ace within this method, we don't need to use self dot has ace because we're only using it here. And now when we're going through the, the list of cards, let's check if the, the rank of a card is an ace and then set has ace to equals true. So I'll do if card dot rank the rank is going to be equal, double equal sign, if it equals ace. After this entire for loop, we're gonna check if the card has an ace and if the value is over 21. If so, then we'll just subtract 10 from the value because that would be the same as setting the ace to equal one instead of 11. So we'll just do if has ace and self.value is greater than 21, the self.value minus equals 10. Okay, and look at this. This is something I don't think I've discussed yet. You could say if has ace equals true and self.value is greater than 21, but you can also, it's like a shorthand. You don't have to say if has ace equals true, if has ace, because has ace is just gonna equal true or false. So you can just say if has ace. So that's just the same as saying if true or if false. And so we're seeing if both of these evaluate to the true, then we will subtract 10 from the value. Okay, now we'll just add another method to get the value of a hand called get value and the function will just return self.value. So we're gonna make sure that we're not, we're indented correctly and do def get value return self.value. And then I have to make sure I put the parentheses here. And then I have to remember to put self. Since this is a self.value, we could call down here, like we could call hand.value to get the value, but it's generally better to make a function to return the value. So I can do get value. That way there may be some extra code you wanna run in there. Like depending on different conditions, uh, you may want to modify the value before you return it. So it's best practice to create a method that will get a value like this for you. 
So currently this value that's returned could be incorrect because if someone's going to get the value, the value has to be calculated correctly first and like checking for aces and, and other things. So let's call, let's calculate the value before we return the value. So I'm going to do self.calculate value. So this is something that I think is new where to call calculate value from what within this, we're going to have to call self.calculate value and self will refer to the instance that we're working with. So we're calling the calculate value on the instance that's that is the, the hand instance and we're getting the value and then we're returning the value. Okay, let's create another method called is blackjack and it'll return true if there's a blackjack and false otherwise. So it's a blackjack if the value is 21. So I'm going to do def get or is oh and put self here. Okay, so this is going to evaluate you to either true or false and return true or false depending on whether there's a blackjack. Now we'll create the final method in the hand class that will display information about the hand. So let's create a method called display They'll, they'll, to start with, we'll just print your hand. Okay, now let's do a quick refactor. Instead of saying your hand, it should either say dealer's hand or your hand, depending on whether self.dealer is true or not. So we're going to, to, to do this all in one line. We're going to use a few things that we learned about earlier including uh, ternary operators, F strings, and going between double quotes and single quotes. And then one other new thing. We are gonna make this into an F string. And then we are going to be using actually single quotes and double quotes within this F string. So if you wanna use single quotes and double quotes within a string, then you can surround it with a triple single quote. So I'm going to delete this quote and just do three single quotes and then delete this quote and do three single quotes. And so we got the double quote, single quote, and now this is a triple quote. So now we can use the double quote and single quotes within this string. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to delete your right here and we are going to put a ternary operator to see if it's going to say dealers or yours, it's either dealers hand or your hand. So to do some code, I'm going to have to put these curly braces here. And then to do this ternary operator, we're going to put dealer. And now here, so it's, here's the double quote and here's the single quote. So dealers, it will return dealers if self.dealer so basically if self.dealer equals true so return dealers if self.dealer else will return your okay that's the line so it's going to be dealer's hand or your hand and next we will add a for loop that will print out each of the cards so for card in self.cards print card. And then finally, if the player is not the dealer, it should print value uh, and then a colon and then print the value of the cards. So to do this, we can actually use the, the not operator. So if not self.dealer, then we will print and we'll print value, value, and then I can just put a comma to print two different items. So the string, and we'll print self dot get value. And it's gonna when you put a comma and two different things, it's gonna put a space in between. And then finally, we'll just add an empty a print statement that will print a blank line. Okay, let's test this out by instead of printing this. We are going to print hand dot display to see if this all works how we thought it was going to work. So your hand, K of spades, two of spades, 
value is 12. So it's actually calculating that correctly because that's 10 plus 2 is 12. And then it's going to print none, which indicates that we did something wrong, which is that we did not need to print this because hand display, display already prints. So now I'll just call hand.display. Okay, so now it doesn't put none or doesn't, yeah, it doesn't put none at the end. So that looks right. Okay, when you're playing blackjack, you don't get to see everyone else's cards. So we're going to update this. So when the dealer's cards are printed during the game, only the second one should display. The first card should display as hidden. So in this for loop, when we're displaying the cards, we're going to need to get access to the card index since that will determine which to display since we're only going to display the second card. So let's start by updating this for loop so we can get access to both the card and the card index. We briefly touched on this earlier in the course. We're going to be using the enumerate function. So when I see for card in, and now I'm going to type in enumerate, and then I'm going to pass in self.cards, and this is going to return the index and the card for each card. So I'm going to type in index, comma, and so in, we're getting the index and the card for all the items in self.cards. And so now we just have to update what's in the for loop to print hidden if it's the first card and it's a dealer. So we'll do if index equals zero and self.dealer, then we will print hidden. And then we can use an else any other time. Uh, and let's make sure this lines up correctly. Any other time we will print the card. So what we did wrong here is this should be double equal sign. I did almost did the the main mistake. You always have to watch out. Never use a single equal sign when you're checking equality because that's the single equal sign is the assignment operator. So if index equals zero and self and we it is the dealer, then we'll print hidden. So in our version of the game, at the end of the game, the, all the dealer's cards will be shown so you can see what the dealer had. So to do that, we're going to create a new parameter in this display method, and it's going to be called show all dealer cards with underscores for spaces. And we're going to set the default value to false. Show all dealer cards. And when the default value is going to be false. Now we'll add it to this if statement. So we'll add another and not show all dealer cards. So it's going to be hidden if we're not showing all the dealer cards. But if we are showing all the dealer cards, then this whole if statement will be false. So we'll just print the card. And there's going to be one other scenario where we're not going to print hidden. If there's a blackjack, then the game is over. The, the person with the blackjack is just going to win. And then we'll just print all the cards. So we are going to add that to this long if statement here. So we'll say and not is blackjack. And it should be self dot is blackjack to be able to call this method here. And since this is such a long line, it's always going to go to this next line, we can do this special thing. We can add a slash here and then just go to the next line. So this slash, or it's a backslash, I mean, this backslash will indicate that the line continues on the following line. Okay, we're done creating the hand class. So we'll delete everything that you were using for testing before. Okay, it's time to code the final and longest class that runs the game. So what I want you to do is create a class called game and inside the class create a method called play and inside the method create a variable called game number with the underscore for the space and set that to zero. So class game 
And then we'll create another variable games to play and set that to zero. Now we're going to set games to play to be whatever the user inputs after they're asked, how many games do you want to play? So you may remember how to do input from before. So we just do input. Now we want to make sure the games to play is an int. So we just need to convert this to an int. Okay, now let's test things so far. So at the end, I will put g equals game. I'm going to create a new game and then g dot play. Okay, let's test this. How many games do you want to play? Five. Okay, well, it's not going to play the games yet. We still have to create that. So there is a potential for an error here. If I do this again and I just put how many games, I put U or some letter, we're going to get an error. So basically, anytime someone puts something that's not a number is going to be an error. So let's create a try except block to handle the exception. And if they put something that's not a number, we'll print you must enter a number. So let me arrange this and we've already learned a little bit about try except blocks. I'm going to put try and it's going to try this. And then if that doesn't work, if there's an exception, it will print you must enter a number. So currently the user gets only one chance to input a correct value. Let's make the program keep asking the user for a value until the user enters a number. This can be done with a while loop. The while loop just keeps looping while something is true. So keep looping until the user enters a number by putting the entire try catch block into a while loop that keeps looping while the games of play is less than or equal to zero. Oh, and I have to make sure I spell while correctly. Okay, now let's create the main game loop. This is a new loop that will loop one time per game played. It should loop while game number is less than games to play. And the first line of the loop should increment the game number by one. Inside the loop, we'll create a deck object in a deck variable and shuffle the deck. Now we'll create a variable called player hand and set it to a hand object. And then we'll create a variable called dealer hand and set it to a hand object. But this time we'll make sure to specify that dealer equals true. Okay, this next part will be a little more complicated. We'll create a for loop that loops two times and each iteration should add a card to the player's hand that is dealt from the deck and add a card to the dealer's hand that is also dealt from the deck. Okay, we've just dealt two cards to each player. Now information is going to be printed to the console for each game. So let's start by printing an empty line. Now we'll print an asterisk 30 times to make a divider. There's a trick to printing something a lot of times. So I can put an asterisk in, in quotation marks and then just do times 30. So it's going to print it 30 times. Now we'll print the current game number out of the total number of games. So it'll be something like game four of 10. And we'll use an F string. And then we'll just print 30 more asterisks. Now we'll display the player's hand. And then the dealer's hand. At this point in the game, someone could already have won if they got a blackjack. The code should check if there's a winner. Let's put the code to check if there's a winner in a separate method of the game class. So create a method called check winner. For now, the method should just return false. And just make sure everything's indented correctly. This should be less indented than the previous line here. The check winner function should take the player hand and dealer hand as arguments. Now, before this return statement, we're going we're gonna to check if player hand dot get value is greater than 21. If so, we'll print you busted dealer wins and then return true. 
And remember, once the program gets to a return statement, none of the following statements in the block are run. Now we'll use a few LF statements to check for various other conditions. So we'll add an LF statement to see if the dealer got over 21, and then we'll print dealer busted, you win, and then return true. Oh, and I just copied all this, but this should be an LF, not if. And then we'll add an LF statement to check if both players have a blackjack. And then we'll print both players have a blackjack, tie, and then return true. And then we'll add an LF statement to check if player hand has a blackjack. And then we'll print, you have blackjack, you win, and then return true. And then we'll check if the dealer hand has a blackjack. And then say, dealer has blackjack, dealer wins, and return true. Okay, we're done with all the hand win conditions, but the game can also end if both players choose not to get more cards. So we're gonna add a new argument to the check winner method with a default value. It's gonna be game over equals false. So we'll add game over equals false. If it's true, that means both players have chosen not to get more cards. Now we'll use the new argument. The string of if and elif statements should only be run if it's not a game over. And we'll make sure the line return false is not in the if statement. So here we'll say if not game over. And then I'll just select all these and put them in here. So if game over is true, we'll check if the player hand's value is more than the dealer hand's value, and if so, we'll print you win. So we can do this with an else here. Else if player. And then we'll do an LF for if it's a tie. So this is an LF, and we'll say if these are equal to each other, and we'll print tie. And then make sure we have the correct emoji for a tie. And then else, the dealer is one. So we'll just do else. And then at the exact same level of indentation as the else we just added, we'll add return true. This will make the method return true if game over equals true. Now let's go back to the play method inside the while loop. And then we'll do an if statement, and we'll do if, and then we'll call the check winner function with the player hand and the dealer hand. So let's go back up here. If self dot check winner, and then we'll enter the player hand and the dealer hand. So if this is true, that means we should go on to the next game. To do that, we do continue. Uh, so remember, continue is gonna just go to the next iteration of the loop, and the loop we're on is this loop. So when we go to the next iteration, we start a new game. At this point in the game, the player will be able to choose hit or stand. So inside the while loop, but not inside the if statement we just added, we'll create a variable called choice and set it to be an empty string. The player should be able to keep choosing until the value of their hand is over 21. So right under the choice variable, we'll add a while loop that loops while player hand's value is less than 21. And inside the loop, we'll add a line to get the choice that's either gonna be hit or stand. And then we'll just add this to convert whatever the answer is, whatever the user put in, we are gonna convert it to lowercase. The while loop we just added should also stop if the user's choice is stand or, or S. So we'll update the line that starts the while loop to also stop if the choice isn't S or stand. So I'll just do and choice not in, and this is, there's a few ways to do it, but this is kind of a, a new way that I'm just showing you here. 
So we are checking if choice is not in this list. And inside the list, we have two elements, S or stand. So if choice is not in that, if the choice is not S or stand, then we'll continue the loop. And then after the input, we'll print an empty line. Also, we want the program to keep asking the user for a choice until the user enters a valid choice. The valid choices are H, S, hit, and stand. So right after the last print statement at the same indentation, we'll add a while loop that will keep looping until the user enters a valid choice. And inside that while loop, we'll ask for input again, but we'll specify it can be H or S as well. So this is going to look very similar to this line, but it's going to kind of clarify things just a little bit. And then we'll print another empty line. The last while loop, we checked if choice was not in a list. Outside of the recently added while loop, but inside the loop we just added before that one, we'll add an if statement to check if choice is in the list hit or H, and if so, we'll add a card to the player's hand that is dealt from the deck. And then right below that, we'll display the player's hand. Outside all of the while loops about the player making a choice, we'll check for a winner. We'll use the same if statement and continue statement that we used last time we checked for a winner. So I'll just copy this. And then we have to make sure it's lined up correctly. Okay, so this is outside of this while loop. So after this all is all done, we check for a winner. Let's just add an empty line there to make it more clear that the while loop is over. Now we'll store the value of the player's hand in a variable named player hand value with underscores for spaces. And we'll do the same thing with the dealer's hand. Remember, I could use the uh, Command D or Control D to select two words at once and change them both at the same time. Okay, the dealer should keep drawing cards until dealer hand value is more than 17. So we'll make this happen with a while loop. And inside the loop, we'll make sure the dealer is dealt a card from the deck and that dealer hand value is updated. So you can try that yourself, but I'm just gonna show you right now. While dealer hand value is less than 17, then we will do dealer hand dot add card. Okay, and after this while loop, we'll display the dealer's hand. And when we call the display method, we'll make sure to set show all dealer cards to true. And since it's the end of the game, that's why we're just showing all the cards. Now we'll check for a winner just like before. Then we'll print final results. Then we'll print your hand, colon, and then the player hand value. And then the dealer's hand. Now we'll call the check winner function one final time but this time it should not be in an if statement and we'll pass in the hands like before, but this time we'll add a third argument of true to indicate that the game is over. And at this point in the code, the game is over. So outside the outer while loop and in the play method, we'll add the final line of saying, thanks for playing. So it's going to be outside that while loop, and we'll put print. And just to demonstrate it, I use an escape character to add a new line. So this slash in is going to add a new line and then do thanks for playing. And when I line this up for with the while loop, I realize that this entire function should not be lined up with the while loop. Sometimes it gets tricky with um, figuring out the exact right indentation. So if I kind of go up straight up here, I should say see that this should be lined up with this play function. So I'm going to come back down to this function. 
I'm going to copy this all and I'm just going to do shift tab to indent it all one less. Uh, this happens sometimes when writing Python code. Sometimes the indentation can get all mi mixed up, but that should be correct now. And I think the red squiggly lines here on the return true are not a mistake in the code, but a mistake in the error checking because it comes after that emoji and it doesn't know how to handle the emoji. But it's perfectly fine for code to have emojis. Okay, let's run the program and try it out. So I'll press play. How many games do I want to play? I'll do three. So game of one of three. So I can see I have 17. I don't know what the dealer has, but I'm going to S for stand. Okay, it's always good to test. So it says deal is missing one required positional argument. So let's go up to, it says line 139. So this can kind of help us know where to go. So let's go up to 139. And yeah, I, I want to deal a single card. So I'm going to deal one card here. And were there any other times I did use deal? I went to add, deal one card here. And yeah, I got the deal one up here. So I just think I just forgot the deal one in those places. So uh, thanks to these error messages, whenever you have a problem, make sure to read the error messages and it can often give you a very good idea of, of what you need to do wrong because it even says deal is missing one required positional argument, the number. So that can really help figure out what's wrong with your code. So let's try that again. We'll do three games. And then this time I will hit and I'm going to stand. Okay, so now we have another error. So it says 173 and, oh, this, I can already see this is spelled wrong. So let's go to 173 and make sure I spell that correctly. And make sure I spell that correctly. Okay. Let's try again. How many games do you want to play? Three. I'm going to hit and hit. Okay, so the first game, you busted, dealer wins. And now we're on game number two. I'll hit, and this time I will stand. Okay, dealer busted, you win. Now we're on game three of three. And I will hit, and I will stand. And final results, your hand 20, dealer's hand 19, you win. Thanks for playing. We just completed this whole game. And that's the end of this tutorial. You now know the basics of Python.